Well, hello, everyone. One of the things I like to do in this class is more than just lecture videos and, and videos covering theory and even application, but once in a while putting together some lecture uh, videos, I guess I'll call it that, that focus on some real hands-on what I consider important topics, things that you can take with you, things that you can apply to your job and really make a difference. And this is one that I want to start with on negotiating a salary, some tips for receiving what you're worth. And most of what I'm talking about here is basically negotiating that salary for your career oriented job, your full time job, uh, things of that sort. So let's begin. Basically, the basics of salary negotiation. Salaries are negotiable, but I put in there the word if. Salaries are negotiable if, okay, um, you have prior work-related experience, all right? You uh, maybe have worked a job before. You you interned while you were in college. You have worked elsewhere in the field for a parent or family member or friend in the field, and now you're moving into it uh, again. Maybe you have a superior education. They only require... Um, you know, an associate's degree, you have a bachelor's, they require a bachelor's, but you also have a master's degree that may be coming down the pipe uh, and things of that sort. You may be able to negotiate um, if there is a high demand for people with your skill set, but the supply of people is low. OK, that being said, be aware you need to have these in place. Uh, these really honestly don't apply a lot to entry level uh, part time jobs. If you're going to start working in, in food services and the pay is a certain amount, maybe minimum wage or maybe you're, you're getting 15 is what they offer. And you say, well, I want 21. And, and why? Well, I just do. OK, that's probably not going to work. So um, don't be afraid to negotiate, but you really need to do some homework before you go down that path. So here's some of the homework that can be done, okay? Number one, you need to know what the job is worth, all right? That is very, very important that you know what the job is worth. It's time to do your homework, okay? It's time to do your homework in advance. You can go to websites like salaryexpert.com or salary.com. You know, you can honestly Google uh, certain jobs and find out what the, uh, the pay range is. And if you do start searching things, keep in mind, if you see things in a range, don't automatically think to the highest level. If the range for being paid for a job is anywhere from, you know, twenty eight to, to $38,000, don't automatically assume, well, I'm going to make $38,000. Um, you best have a reason why, but do your homework beforehand. Much better to me than going to Google would be to go to, say, the OTC Career Center and talk to them and ask them, you know, this is what I'm looking at as far as a job. Uh, this is what I'm hoping to do. Can you give me any idea what the uh, starting salary range is based on my education and experience and so on? Know that in advance. It is very important that you do. You're going in armed with information and it will only make you a better person in the long run. Know what you need to earn, okay? Uh, I run into a lot of students who basically find themselves in a situation, and it's not saying it's bad, that they basically live with one or two or three or more roommates because they find that it's expensive to live on your own. What do you need to earn, okay? A job may look very uh, interesting. It may look very appealing. But if the salary is not going to be enough to cover the rent, your your car loan, your utilities, your food, your entertainment, your insurance and all those expenses, you know, if it won't cover them, you have to either turn around and, and you know, accept the fact that you're going to be, you know, bunking with friends and living with others to make it all happen or you're going to have to say no. 
you know, thanks, but no thanks. If this is the pay, I can't make that work. It's just as simple as that. And then the other thing is to start working two jobs or more. And obviously, I, I would hope that if you're doing a career-oriented job, you wouldn't have to do that. But you need to know when you go into a job interview and it's time to talk pay, what you need bare minimum to survive. And then hopefully you can put 5 to 15% above that. Finally, know what you're worth, okay? I say finally, I have a few more slides to go, but know what you are worth. If you think you are worth more than the starting salary, and a lot of people do, I've met a lot of students over the years, and I'll just use that same amount from earlier, 28 to 38,000, and I get a lot of students that turn around and say, well, I should probably be making 38,000. And I'll ask them in class, well, why do you think so? And they give you that quiet thousand mile stare because they don't know. They just think they should. All right. Um, basically, you, if you're going to ask and negotiate a salary, you need to know uh, why you deserve more than the base amount. All right. You need to point out that you have that extra experience. You need to point out that you already have education. You need to point out that you uh, uh, have certification or training that uh, others don't typically have but often need. Okay. Um, be prepared to explain and never get defensive. All right. If you're going to ask for, you know, instead of 28, you're going to ask for 30 or 32, explain to them that, hey, uh, you had prior experience in the field of nursing or you had prior experience as an accountant doing bookkeeping for your family's business. And that's why you're, you're pretty good at this stuff or you graduated top of your class or something like that. Be prepared to explain. But always, 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 always stay within the range. OK, um, you're just going to shoot yourself in the foot, metaphorically speaking, if you turn around and go outside that range. I just keep in with the example. Let's say the range uh, starting salary is twenty eight to thirty eight thousand. And you walk in and say, uh, I think I deserve 50. Even if you give them a reason, OK, uh, there's a very good chance that they're not going to be impressed with your rationale. All right. Unless you're a former CEO and you have 15 or 30 years experience, then you're overqualified anyways, but you should be looking elsewhere. Stay within the range. Going outside of the range is sort of self-defeating and you really don't want to do that. Don't be afraid to negotiate. Just be prepared as to why you deserve more and how much you think it is. And this is, you know, the situation and so on. Um, I had a person once ask, can I tell them about my expenses? Yeah, if you think that that's the big reason why you need to get an extra thousand or two thousand or whatever it may be as far as salary, go ahead and share that. But don't, I personally don't believe in giving a big sob story. I've heard of students doing that, you know, that first career oriented job. Well, I've had a tough go of it and this and that. A lot of businesses don't care. And I'm sorry, but they're not interested in that. This is our amount and so on. Um, if you're asking moderately, I think that's great and I want you to do it, but um, be very careful about that, okay? Finally, let me say this. There's more to negotiation than just salary. Some companies uh, come along and maybe you want to work for them. Companies come along and, and you um, would like to make more money, but the truth of the matter is that probably isn't going to happen because they can't afford to pay you more. There are other things to consider, such as paid time off. That's what PTO stands for, paid time off. Or maybe asking for more vacation. Be careful. I wouldn't shoot the moon to start off with. It's not a good idea. But if what they're telling you is that after six months, you get a week's vacation, explain that with all my experience and time and training, I would like to at least ask, can I get two weeks uh, vacation? Um, at six months, or maybe I get two weeks at the end of a year where normally I'd have to wait, you know, even longer than that. They may say no, but at least you can try. And and if you can explain why you think that's a, a good one in, in lieu of paying more salary, can I at least have this? Sometimes that's a good sale. Uh, starting dates is another one. Uh, explaining why you may need to start later uh, or change the starting date from what they want. 
uh, you know, I, I'm not asking for salary, but can you adjust for this? And the last one I've seen is working conditions. Some people may turn around and say, um, you know, instead of, of getting more salary, if I can prove myself after 180 days, which is six months, can I start working on Fridays from home? Be able to see me online, you'll be able to see that I'm working and so on. The answer may be no, but you can start asking for things and be very careful. I really don't think you should ask for all of them. <laughs> I've seen people, heard of people doing that. I'd like to start in two weeks, I'd like to start with four weeks vacation, and I'd like to work from home most of the time. Well, no, you're asking for too much, and uh, very rarely are you going to get all of those things. So being careful, explaining why. And, and and not going too overboard, it could make a, a good situation. Research tells us that women don't do as much negotiating as men. Hey, ladies, uh, gentlemen, you know, if you can and you've got a basis for doing it, try to negotiate it. If the answer is no, then you have to decide. There's a good chance that you might still be able to make the job work and you say, okay, that's fine. But who knows, maybe the answer is yes. And so it works out in the end. Folks, that's what I've got for you. I wish you all the very best. Keep these things in mind. You'll need to know them for quiz. You need to know them for the midterm. And you need to know them for life. Take care.